Hey everybody, so today we're in day eight of our 14 days of reading uh, leading up to Easter. And so you probably noticed that the first six days of a reading were all in the Gospel of John, uh, looking at John's account of the events leading up to Easter. And on day seven, we were in Genesis 22, looking at Abraham and Isaac, and also Romans chapter five. Well, uh, from here on out, leading up to Easter, we're going to the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which are known as the Synoptic Gospels, and looking at their accounts of these events. And so today, we're in Matthew chapter 22. Uh, you'll read the first 17 verses, then you'll jump to verse 33 and finish the chapter out. And so in the first part of chapter 22, we have the parable of the wedding feast, which is a familiar story. I'm excited about reading that. Uh, but what I want to focus on is uh, things begin to happen that are ultimately going to, you'll see, come to fruition when we get to uh, the death of Christ. And that is that the Pharisees or religious leaders began to try to just trip Jesus up or try to question him in certain ways. And in 22, we see it in three different ways that they try to question. The first is when it comes to taxes and to Caesar. And ultimately, they're trying to trip him up in regards to Rome and, his, and the power. And we have the famous where we pay we give, give to Caesar what is his. And so, and then later on, uh, beginning verse 34, they begin to ask him, tripping him up, like, what is the greatest commandment, right? So if you say one commandment is greater than the other, then obviously you're in trouble there. And Jesus answers beautifully uh, when he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, and he says, and on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Ultimately, he gave the answer that, if you love God and you love others, then you fulfill ultimately the law there. So he, he, he won. And then we see him win again when they asked him, and uh, they asked him, who do you think is the Christ? Who, whose son is he? And, and he gives his answer. And what we see them trying to do is trying to trip him up, trying to make him fall. But when we say Christ was a spotless lamb, that means completely spotless, not only in his morality, but even in his thinking, his theology, because he was God. And this is what it says in verse 46, and no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. So they tempt him or they test him with Rome, they test him with the law in regards to the Messiah, yet they could not defeat him. We serve an incredible Christ. Be blessed today.